and, and I, I mean, I stretched my bollock and tried to cut the skin, and it didn't. So you know, you know, I, I think I might have shared a bit much, but it is what it is. I did, I did think we were leading onto you there, actually getting your testicles out to show us that, but, <laughs> but we're not, we're not doing that today. Are we? but And we are live. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to episode 37 of the Punch Perfect podcast brought to you by The Neutral Corner. As always, I'm your host, Jamie Bourne. And before we get going today, just a quick reminder that all our episodes are available on YouTube, Apple and Spotify podcast, Podbean and Amazon Music. Going first today, I'll go to Charlie. How are you doing, Charlie Griffiths? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you very much. It's uh, been a bit of a bit of a quiet one for, for the English side of boxing, but onwards and upwards to, to this week's exciting fight, eh? Yeah, definitely. Next, I'll go to uh, unbeaten English middleweight champion, Linus. Good to have you back, Linus. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? How's everyone doing? Yeah, well, good. Thanks, mate. Good to have you back on. And lastly, a good friend of the show and someone that's uh, been really important behind the scenes at the Neutral Corner. I'm a good friend, Michael Joyce. How you doing, Michael? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Go easy with me today, fellas. <laughs> no worries. I'm sure you'll be a natural. Um, we're now going to go to Charlie Griffiths because we have a sponsor for today's episode. Episode 37 of the Punch Perfect podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the below the waist grooming champion of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They have just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, 4.0. Join over 2 million men who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code PUNCHPERFECT at manscaped.com. You can see all the links and promotions on the screen or visit the description box below. So I'll be honest, I watch loads of podcasts, loads of YouTube videos. I see everyone getting sponsored by all different things. And sometimes I think to myself, there's just no way. There's no way that half of this stuff that people promote, they're actually using and stuff. This, perfect. Absolutely. I mean, I've grown tired of using the same trimmer on my face and balls anyway. I mean, sounds disgusting, but everyone definitely does it. And I think the main worry, I mean, Linus, you've already alluded to this. The main worry is always nicking your balls. No one wants, no one wants bleeding balls, right? Linus, listen, true listen. or false? You don't listen, listen. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be out here. The first time I ever, like, shaved more, like, like you know, went anywhere near there when I was a bit younger. I, I was naive. I didn't know what to do. So I just grabbed uh, a little razor. I went to town. I, I, I massacred myself a little bit. It is what it is. Um, then I started using some clippers. And, you know, I still massacred myself. But the one thing that when, um, uh, you know, like you, like you, Charlie, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And I always get it up. Manscaped always comes up. And advert always comes up. And I thought to myself, and they say, oh, the first, you know, these won't nick your balls. And I thought, hmm. Mm, really 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 yeah, really uh, I, 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 bet, I bet they will so when i got it i tried it out and, and i i mean i stretched my bollock and tried to cut the skin and it didn't so you know you know i, I think i might have shared a bit much but it is what it is i did i did think we were leading on to you there actually getting your testicles out to show us that but, <laughs> but we're not we're not doing that today are we? but put it this way put it this way if yeah, i did cut my rated balls, version i would have i would have got them out and i would have been like cancel this sponsorship <laughs> it don't work <laughs> Look at this. Uh, it comes in a lovely little box. Look, lovely gold writing. Yeah. All the tools in there. Also, not to, to sort of take this podcast to the gutter, but can you hear that? Bet you can't. No one, no one thinks that you're, you know, doing something dodgy with that weird vibrating noise. No one can hear it. It's got a lovely light on it as well. Don't you know can if do you it in the dark. Lovely light. You, you can, can do, do it. it I, don't know, I don't know why you're doing it in the dark, but you can. He's right. You can do it in the dark if you wish. Comes with a lovely <laughs> pair of boxes. Lovely pair of boxes. They're, they're clean. Don't worry. They're not right near my nose without them being clean. They're all right. And uh, yeah, some, some, what else we got in here? Ball deodorant. That feels nice afterwards. Anyone else try that yet? Ball toner as well. Wipe all that in. It's lovely. It's honestly lovely. And it says your balls will thank you. Your girlfriend as well or boyfriend, whatever you're into. There's no, no judging on this podcast. But yeah, get yourself over to manscaped.com punch perfect i've also been practicing saying punch perfect and realizing my my the way i sort of pronounce words is atrocious it sounds like pudge perfect don't don't type pudge perfect and you'll get zero percent off on that but 20 percent off on punch perfect over at manscaped.com um so going from one 
sort of really good thing, which is this, to, to one shit thing. Jamie, did you enjoy the boxing this weekend? Uh, well, the UK boxing show, I'm going to let Linus have his rant and I'll let Michael talk about it because I'm sure he loved it. Um, but I'm, I've been sat here pretty chuffed with myself this morning because I think last week we sat in here and I bigged up uh, the super bantamweight fight between Lewis Neri and Brandon Figueroa. And I just felt that momentum was siding with Figueroa. And there's, I've always felt with Neri that if you put the pressure on him, I think he'll fold. There's been a lot of problems in his career, his personal life. And there's always you can get a good judge of character from people like that. And I think Brandon Figueroa last night started to drown him a little bit in the middle rounds. He took some, took some heat early on, but managed to stick with it. And then by sort of round six or seven, he started going to the body and really, really taking him into deep waters. And I think Neri quit. I, I think he went down because he was just being overwhelmed. If you've seen the, the slow motion highlights, it didn't look like anything particularly landed cleanly that would fold you. you know, it wasn't like a, a Ryan Garcia, Luke Campbell type body shot where you just see why they're collapsed on the floor. It sort of brushed him across the stomach about 15 seconds before he tried to quit. So I was absolutely chuffed for uh, for Brandon Figueroa because I think he's a really nice kid and someone that's improving. And the Stephen Fulton fight just really, really excites me. Um, Fulton got in the ring afterwards and was really confident, but really respectful as well. And I think in the in the upcoming calendar for the rest of the year, I'm so excited for that fight and happy for Brandon Figueroa and also chuffed with myself for, for getting that right on the podcast last week. Um, also chuffed, I said that uh, Jason Cunningham would give your fire a really good fight. Um, I'd seen Cunningham before in Manchester and I just saw that he made, he gave Condon some really hard rounds and I don't see Yafai even at the level of Condon. I've never really rated Yafai. I think he comes forward, relies on his power and if that doesn't work, he's in a whole world of trouble. So really chuffed with that as well. I'll let Linus uh, move on to talk about the rest of the car because he was really happy with it. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm sure as hell not going to say what I said off camera because <laughs> <laughs> I still want to work with these guys. I still want to get on these shows. Um, <laughs> So, look, I, I, you know, in all honesty, I watched it yesterday. I, you know what? If it wasn't for mates of mine fighting on it yesterday, I wouldn't have remembered it was on. You know, somebody, I, I was literally sitting there scrolling through um, Instagram and I saw someone go, oh, yeah, the cards just started on Facebook Live. And I was like, is it? Like, oh, there was boxing on. And then, you know, it's, it, you know, it's what it is. And then, then I watched it um I was only interested in Lerone Richards and uh, Joshua Waxy anyway, and obviously they both got the wins. And um, quite, uh, you know, very impressed with Lerone Richards. I think he's he's one he's one of those fighters. He's you know incredibly classy, definitely above the level he fights at. Um, and I think he's one of those fighters that will step it up when the opponent is is better. Do you know, like yesterday, he's kind of going through the gears. He didn't really step on it. He didn't really he didn't really take himself. He didn't really put himself in, in danger to make, you know what I mean? He didn't really do anything. He kind of was just kind of coasted it out, boxed it out to win. Um, his opponent didn't really trouble him at all. And um, it was, you know, wide shut out for, uh, especially at European level, you don't really see cards like that, but, you know, it was, it was what it is. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure why they, I'm not, I'm not sure why he got matched the way he did um, in a sense of, with a player at that level, I think it's it's time to step him up. I think it's time to push him on. You know, what well, after the fight they were mentioning names like um oh God, uh, Bivol. Um they were mentioning names like Bivol and Craig Richards. And, you know, I'm not saying he doesn't beat these guys. I hundred percent think he's got all the talent in the world. And he's, you know, he, he works hard and he's got a good really good team around him and he he hundred percent can push on to British and above. I just think fights like these don't really they're not really doing him any favours. I think just you know, I I don't know. I, I just I just think the uh, level of opposition yesterday was well below him, and um, for his development, I don't really think it was. Uh, he really did much. Yeah, I completely agree. I'll go on to Michael quickly. I'd like to get your thoughts, Michael, on the card, but also I know off air you were saying to me that you're a little bit frustrated because you had a Dalton Smith and Bawatsi, uh knockout double. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on Dalton Smith because it was kind of labelled that Apple Yard against him would be the the fight of the night, the a good test for Smith to step up, but he didn't look in any trouble at all. I thought he looked really good. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely spot on. I think uh, Dalton Smith looks like, you know, obviously he's still kind of in that prospect zone, but he looks like he's ready to sort of progress and move forward. Um, yeah, look very trouble. Uh, yeah, with regards to the card... It was what it was. I mean, obviously the shock kind of, or the bookie shock. I mean, I know you mentioned Cunningham. Uh, you fancied him on an outsider chance, but 
yeah, your fire was a bit wild with his hooks, wasn't he? He was sort of, you know, swinging and missing and hoping for the best almost towards the end and hoping to get somewhere. Uh, yeah, and just echoing what Linus said, really, it's time for Boazzi to move up, isn't it? I think, um, you know, fighting, I mean, the, the French guy, he come over and give it his best. Um, but ultimately, you could see his balance was unsteady from round one onwards. Yeah. Boazzi was, it was a matter of time, really. I mean, he was never in any danger. When Boazzi wanted to, the overhand right was an absolute killer shot, wasn't it? I mean, the poor bloke was out before he'd even hit the floor. But, um, yeah, if you're watching Boazzi, I had you to win rounds five and six in a double with Dalton Smith five and six. So once you've used your Manscaped code, perhaps you could send me the money my way because uh, that would have been nice. I'd have needed that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, come to Charlie, lastly, get your thoughts uh, on the weekend. Any kind of key takeaways or anything that we haven't mentioned? Or if you want to cover cover that ground as well, feel free. Yeah, I, th- I feel like Richard's, what he did do, I mean, I know, I know there was a lot of people sort of calling him boring in the ring and stuff. I think what he did do is at least sort of push his personality a little bit more after the fight and stuff. And there seems to be just, just it's just small things like that sometimes can just garner more interest and, you know, more intrigue into fights again. I know you alluded to the Lennox Clark win last week against him, which, you know, is sort of gone, is a lot better win after, after his win against Hutchinson. I see Clark sort of asking him for the fight again. Um, wonder if, wonder if that will interest sort of Hearn in any way after the win against Hutchinson or or if they'll just or if they'll just continue to match him the way they're choosing to. But yeah, I, I know Linus sort of rates Leron Richards a lot. I'm interested to see just how high he can go. I know I know Sam Jones is really, really high on him, but he's also high on a few other people that that maybe shouldn't be high on. Um and then and then the Boazzi thing again, yeah. I mean I mean I said last week that it it wouldn't surprise me if they started talking about Craig Richards. I'm not not going to pat myself on the back as as sort of much as Jamie deserves for his call on on the Neri fight because I think it's just obvious. It just seems like that is a way they'll go. He's he was desperate for for Boazzi Johnson for absolutely ages, so it just it just makes sense that. Um, but but the whole the whole way that they built Boazzi and and the sort of matchmaking has been weird, even down to the fact of last night they was asked what's next and he said oh he could box in America or he could headline a a fight camp. And it it seems even then they they're not a hundred percent sure what they want to do with him, where they want to match him, and and uh, and it's a shame because Boazzi does look like he has all the tools to um to easily be the the best the best in Britain out of that little mix. You know I feel like. I feel he will he will eventually stamp his his thing on that, but but also then for for world title honours as well. But it just just to me feels a long long way off of that at the minute. And it's all well and good going on screen and saying, oh, we think he can beat Bivol in the future, but but right now he doesn't he doesn't deserve a fight with Bivol anytime soon until he till he starts picking up some names that he needs to. Yeah, completely agree. Good 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 summary there. Um, I think Richards will be. Be the logical thing, I think, is, you know, Eddie always encourages domestic fights where he can. I think there's a couple of other names in there as well that I could see Eddie Hearn making, but again, it just doesn't prepare him for world level. I think Krasniki, that's the number one, that that gets him the mandatory position, but doesn't prepare him for a bivol. I know there's a border leak as well that uh, was another Olympic bronze medalist, was on the other side of the draw to Boazzi. He's top, top eight, I think, with all governing bodies. I could see Hearn sticking him in there and trying to push that narrative as well of, you know, they both Olympic bronze medalists. We'll see who kicks on sort of thing. But Boazzi needs to stop worrying about kind of ranking, positioning and everything and needs to start worrying about where he is and he needs to have a fight next that is going to really take him into deep waters and see if he can come right the other side. Um, but yeah, not a, a very disappointing disappointing card. Linus, did you have anything to add? I saw your sort of face crop up towards the end. Do you have anything to add before um, we move on? I don't know. I don't know. I just think with, with Boazzi, he's very definitely one of the top, top, top domestic light heavyweights. One one of the top. I don't know why they don't. There's so many fighters out there. There's Craig Richards, there's Annie Yard, there's Lyndon Arthur. But I don't know how his hand is. There's there's so many fights out there that he can scope up, test himself now, push on to. Obviously, I'm talking traditional routes, not you know, um, WBO international and all that stuff. Um, I'm talking the traditional routes like British Commonwealths. Um, even push on to a print depending on who's there and things that actually test yourself properly. I mean, realistically, you're 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 an Olympic medalist, and this is no, this is nothing to Boazzi. It's just you know the management and things like that. You know they want to. He's he's an Olympic medalist. There's no reason why, and I, I believe in his ability. I think I think he's miles 
you know, hit leaps and bounds above a lot of people around the domestic team. I, I don't know why they don't just get these names on and um, get these scouts under their, you know, get get these names in, under their un, under his belt and yeah. just push on. Because, yeah. you know, you, you get this thing where you get some fighters, they'll fight, you know, this and that, this and this, this and that. And then all of a sudden, get like some pole, get a mandatory position, go up against a world fight, a level, level fighter, and they can't do it. I'm not saying that's going to be Boatsy. I'm not saying that is Boatsy, but I'm just saying, like, we've, we've seen it a lot. Yeah. We've seen so it happen with Kelly. Never fought anyone domestically, really. And um, it is, uh, I don't know. It is what it is. I don't know. It's, 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 you, you know what I mean? You, you sit, if I'm sitting here as a, uh, just a fan, it is, it's frustrating to see it because you know how talented these fighters are and, you know, you want to see them go through the roots, but it is what it is. Let's, let's, let's hope he, you know, let's hope his management, you know, make it, make it work out for him. Yeah, hope so. But uh, we'll now go into to the main part of the episode. So what we'll do first is very much similar to the Canelo Saunders episode. We're going to do a breakdown and then after the halftime break, we'll do our predictions. But this is for Jose Ramirez versus Josh Taylor. I've been calling it Taylor Ramirez, but top rank, uh, the promotion is definitely Ramirez Taylor. So let's probably get used to saying it. Um, we'll do our breakdown first, go around each person, sort of give our thoughts on the fight. And then after the halftime break, we'll come back and give our predictions. I'm really, really looking forward to this fight and I'm glad they're starting to pick up some traction on it from the top rank side, doing the Blood, Sweat and Tears series and everything. For the promotion was a little bit bad and they took too long to get the venue and stuff but I feel like it's starting to ramp up now Josh Taylor for me is the most layered British fighter there is at the minute I think his footwork is immense I think he can box at range because he's very rangy but I think the the thing that goes underrated about him is his physicality and his ability to box on the inside I think that's ultimately the thing that won him the fight against Progre everyone said how strong Progre was but Josh Taylor outmanned him in there and out physicaled him so I think that that's something that doesn't get mentioned enough with Taylor I think his variation as well Taylor's never it's never power shot after power shot. It's never set up after set up. It's all mixed. He'll tap to the body and bang away or just bang away or then he'll move and switch it up. And I think Josh Taylor is our is our best British fighter at the minute. And I think we should, should be really rooting for him this weekend. I'm not usually on the, the back of Brit Brigade. That was the hardest thing. That was worse than Punch Perfect podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm never usually one that's always like you should support the Brit, but I will be supporting Josh Taylor this weekend. I think the, f the thing is he needs to worry about himself more than he needs to worry about Ramirez. Ramirez. Sometimes when you go in against an opponent, you have to really watch them and understand what they do and how you're going to go about your business. But Josh Taylor knows deep down that he's better than Ramirez in pretty much every category. So it comes down to what he does because Josh Taylor is very emotional. I remember him at the Commonwealth Games when he lost to Tom Stalker and he was just in buckets and buckets of tears and it was a little bit strange. He's always been very emotional and he can be dragged into the wrong sorts of fights. And that's the only way Ramirez gets a foothold this weekend is if he gets dragged into that. So I think... I think Taylor needs to focus on what he does and not worry so much about Ramirez. And then moving on to Ramirez, I think a lot of people say well, he's 26 and 0, he's got two belts. How does someone like that not get more respect? And I think it's because a lot of things, I think promotionally in the early part of his career, he stayed in Fresno, California, never really branched out and didn't build his profile enough. So I think that's one thing. Didn't go into the World Boxing Super Series, which was a massive knock when all the top light welterweights did. I think that really hurt him. And then I think the other thing is just he's never separated himself from world class to elite like Taylor did against Progre. Ramirez has gone in against Cepeda and Postel and had two really close fights, fights where some people have given it the other way. And if, Postel, if uh, Ramirez had gone in there and won those clearly, like he did against Hooker, you'd probably much be much higher on Ramirez. But I think his problem is, is that those fights were close and he never really separated himself. I think the thing for him this weekend is he has to have early success. Ramirez is a success fighter. So if he has success, he builds on it and he gets better. He builds confidence and he starts to find holes in his opponent. But if he doesn't have that success, he just goes through the motions, which we've seen against Cepeda and Postel, who kept it long. I think you've seen it in some of his other fights as well. So I think people will probably say we've been a little bit biased like we do with the Canelo Saunders thing. But I just see, much like Canelo Saunders, Josh Taylor is better in every department. And if he does everything right, I think he can win this. He's in quite comfortable style this weekend. Now going to come to Michael as, a, as our special guest today. How do, you, uh, how do you view this matchup more so than your prediction? Um, yeah, I mean, echoing what you said, for me, Josh Taylor is probably Britain's pound for pound number one. Uh, I think he 
does everything very well. He can. Uh, one of my favourite things about him is his body work. When he goes inside and he whips the hooks to the body that are lethal. Uh, that's uh, one of my favourite sort of aspects about him. But like you say, he can box it range. He can do sort of everything there. Um, one of the things that's sort of interesting for me is about this fight coming up is uh, sort of Taylor's inactivity. Now, uh, I, I mean, he's had the one round last year against the Thai name. Uh, I'm not even going to butcher that guy's name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cheers. <laughs> yeah, like um, he's had one round there. Um, so will the inactivity or something like play down play down the stretch? You know, so you say like Ramirez is sort of a confidence guy and stuff like that. But when I remember looking back at Taylor Progress, for example, um, you know, Taylor likes to get dragged into a fight sometimes that he doesn't kind of need to because his skill level, I believe, is also much better than Ramirez is. So if I was sort of Taylor, I wouldn't get dragged into the fight. You know, just keep, you know, do like you say, do what you do best and, and you will come out the winner. Um, another thing as well is the partnership with Ben Davison. We haven't really seen how that's going to materialise yet. Obviously, we only had the 70 seconds last year. Um, so I'm quite interested to see how that plays out as well, see if that has any effect and sort of see the adjustments or any improvements that, you know, because that Davison has implemented on, on Taylor's game. Because, again, we haven't had a chance to see that yet due to a 70-second blowout. So I think that's a couple of things there that are quite interested to see on a Sunday night. Yeah, definitely. I think the Davison thing is, is really important. Only one sort of working round, not even a full round. And I think that, that can play a part. And we've seen Davison's tried to mould a lot of his fighters into, into sort of power punches recently. So I wonder how we'll approach it with Taylor. Charlie, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think to be honest, as Michael was saying about him, you know, having all the everything over Ramirez and, and just not needing to get involved. I think that's the one thing that worries me about Taylor is that maybe maybe harping back to what you were saying about being overly emotional. He does he does sometimes just want to stand and trade a little bit. I don't know if it's to prove something to himself or if it's just because sometimes in that moment in the fight he you know the he doesn't have control over necessarily the the emotions and, and wanting to just box at range or or even his inside stuff where he's where he does look so good but but that th- my worry is and and do you know what i i am back in taylor this week and i think he will ultimately win i think the two things that that get ramirez the win is one if he does just stand and try to have a trade up and gets caught with something that he should never have been you know within range of being caught in and also something that i don't think has been mentioned enough is is where where they're fighting and and taylor maybe not getting a maybe not getting a fair crack at it on the judges' cards. You know, I can see if we if we think about everything we say about our, our judges over here and, and all, you know, it's not only over here. We've, we've seen it time and time again in all different types of countries and worrying about stuff like that. I can absolutely see a way that Josh Taylor's name simply isn't big enough over in different countries, even over here particularly. You know, it's not it's being shown on fight TV. None of our broadcasts have picked it up that I am just a little bit worried if Josh Taylor doesn't win it by a landslide on the cards that we end up seeing some dodgy decisions um, and, and him losing, losing in that way. And, and though Taylor, you know, obviously has got some, got some big KOs on his record. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I see this ending in, sorry, my screen looked like it was fuzzing me out then. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I see it ending in a in a KO and I think I think Taylor's gonna have to win and win clearly to to definitely get the decision and do you know our comment section lately has been has been really good on these on these videos and and I I notice a lot of a lot of people from over in America commenting and stuff and I'm really really interested to see where they go this week because the more it's getting closer to this fight the more I see um I more I see non-British people really really fancying Ramirez to get the job done here and I'm, I'm I'm surprised and and interested to see what it is they've seen in Ramirez or or not seen in Taylor could be the case as to why they're so sure in it because when the fight was first made I thought great fight you know all the belts is always good but but Taylor ultimately wins this fairly handedly um just just as this build into it I'm just just starting to feel it might be that little bit closer than maybe I first thought 
I think that's a big fight feel, though. I think you get that with every big fight. It starts to become closer around the time and people start to sort of see it that way. But the the judging thing is prevalent and it's happened to Ramirez a few times where he has got not lucky on the decision, but it's been more clean cut on the decision than it should have been. Um, so that that is definitely an issue this weekend. And I think Ramirez has a really good chin, which is a problem for Taylor because I don't think he'll get him out of there. Linus, what are your thoughts to add? Um, a couple of things. Um, just going to spiral straight off the back of what you just said. I, you know, you say, yeah, you don't think Taylor will get him out of there. I think Taylor's, like everyone said, supreme body puncher. Incredible. One of the best. One of the best I've seen anyway. Um, he's got, he's, you know, he's realistically the whole package, especially if you're the one fighting him. If I look at Josh Taylor, I think, well, first of all, fuck that. He's a southpaw. He's got incredible feet. He's got really good hands, good variation, and he's got good power, great body punching, and he moves well, and he's kind of hard to hit. And yeah, all those things don't sound fun to me. I don't, I don't want to fight someone like that. So um, yeah, no. So yeah, um, I'm not sure why Josh Taylor isn't a bigger name than he is in this country, especially. Um, obviously, in in where in Scotland, yeah, he's a massive name. But you know, GB as a whole is quite disappointing that no one's picked it up. Um, you know, he has all the tools to get it done, like Charlie said. It, you know, is. The judging, I, I'm not really worried about the judging too much. I think, I think Taylor can separate himself enough. But what I'm worried about is, what I'm worried about is all the other stuff. It's the ref stuff, like referees and things like that. The things that they'll let slide, the things that they won't pull up on. They, you know, I mean, all these little things. And where you say Josh Taylor is quite emotional, who knows if that will get to him? Who knows if, you know, he gets hit low and he goes to complain. The referee doesn't do anything about it and tries to call it. Not, you know, what I mean, who who knows? It's, it might be one of those, but. Um, I believe he has. He's one. He's definitely one of the best we have uh, in in GB, and um, yeah, definitely one of the best. And I can't see why he does not win this fight. The only reason he doesn't win this fight is because of him, not any, not Ramirez, not anyone else. Yeah, I agree. But the thing is, we say about Taylor not being a big name here, but but by all accounts, I've I've had quite a few interviews on this channel recently where I've been speaking to American YouTubers, journalists and stuff, and they say the problem with Ramirez and the reason he probably doesn't get the respect of a 26-0 unified champion is his, his personality and his image isn't big enough. So he has the same issue Taylor has. And I think maybe from a top-ranked side, I think Bob Arum might be looking at this going, do you know what? The winner of this is ultimately going to be a Crawford opponent. I think that's pretty much nailed on. I think he'd rather have Josh Taylor for Crawford than he would Ramirez. So I think there's there's that to consider as well. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting because I think we've all sort of agreed that Josh can't get dragged into the wrong sort of fight. But he got dragged into the wrong sort of fight against Progray and sort of really came out on top. Um, I think the thing that he does really well is he makes it look like he's fighting on the inside, but he's quite good at managing mm. the distance to keep it long yeah. as well. So I think that's going to be really interesting. Has anyone got anything to add before we uh, move into the halftime break? Just on the Progray thing, I think that's what, that's what I mean, I rated Taylor before then, but really, really decided in my head he was elite that those those sort of early to mid rounds, it, it looked a little bit watching it back. like, And even on the night, I felt this way that Progray was just starting to look a little bit better than him in there. And it, and it was just all going to be a little bit too much. And he learned on the job in there and eventually started to, um, to almost box the way that Progre, the, the fight Progre wanted and beat him at it. You know, to to in a 12-round fight, sometimes it's just, if a, if a fight starts to get away from you, sometimes it just gets all a bit too much in there, especially against another elite guy. And Taylor that night just started, um, started to lose rounds. And I thought, you know what, it's going to be a little bit too much here. And just really, really impressed by the way he came back, which ultimately I view Progre and Taylor as the one and two I know obviously Ramirez has the belts but just for me just the way it's fallen that that Taylor and Progre have already fought that and I know styles make fights and just because you've beat one it doesn't mean that you can't lose to the other and not be you know not have it one and two that way but yeah I just feel like he he showed enough in that Progre fight to to certainly go into this fight feeling like it's his to lose. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, the one and two thing is interesting because I've always said that Progre was number two. But I think going into this, Ramirez will feel like the number two because of Progre's kind of recent recent showings and hasn't made like well weight since that fight. So I think Ramirez, this does feel like the one and two to me now. I feel Progre is a little bit out of the picture and it's going to be the one and two that get in there on the night because Progre sort of moved on. We're now going to a halftime break and we'll come back and we'll give our full predictions for Saturday night.
Right, guys, welcome back to part two of this episode. So now we're going to go into our Ramirez Taylor predictions. I'm going to come to Michael first, mate. So, what's your, we've done a little bit of a breakdown, gave our thoughts. What's your official prediction for Saturday night? Uh, official prediction, I'll probably go with Taylor, uh, unanimous decision. Uh, I just think ultimately he's got all the tools to win, uh, providing, you know, obviously we've mentioned the judges, but I, 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 I don't see Ramirez winning enough clear rounds off Taylor to be able to uh, influence that. Um, yeah, I just, unless, again, we, and we mentioned Taylor, sometimes it's dragged into a dogfight. I, I don't know if Ramirez would necessarily win a dogfight, looking at the Progress fight. Um, you know, Taylor in Progress were fighting in a telephone box at one point, you know, and Taylor still come out on top. And I just don't know if uh, Ramirez ultimately will have enough to beat Taylor on the night. Like I say, He's got a decent enough chin, so I can't see uh, Ramirez getting stopped. But, yeah, I see Taylor winning on points. OK, that's one for Taylor. Linus, what's your official prediction? Uh, I'm going Taylor. I'll go a little bit more. <clears throat> I'll stamp a little bit more on it. I'm saying he'll, he'll, um, he'll stop Ramirez, not to the head, to the body, though. We will put him down a couple of times and he won't get up. What, late on or mid ray or sort of? Uh, mid to late, I'd say six to six to ten. He, uh, six to ten, he does him. I, I won't put a bet on because I ain't that confident on it. But I don't know the way Taylor's been going. I, I, he's he's got it in his arsenal to do it. And, um, yeah, I, I think I think like over there, I think they're going to be conscious about the fact that they're the away fighter. They are, you know, they don't really want to leave anything in judges' hands. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just just that's just my gut feeling. Okay, Charlie, your prediction? I'm gonna go for Ramirez unanimous decision. Uh, mainly because I know if you keep getting stuff right at the end of the year, you're going to clip up all you all the times you were right. And I'd quite like to make the highlight reel at least once of, of making a big call. But no, I've just got a funny feeling that it's going to be a little bit closer than maybe it's made out to be. And maybe even the way I've made it out to be, I've been Taylor all along and I've just kind of talked myself into it a little bit that Ramirez is going to get Ramirez is going to get a decision. Um, I might even go split decision on the cards where, where we may sort of come out of it saying to ourselves, we had Taylor winning, but could he have done a little bit more to have really stamped it home? Um, the in inactivity stuff and and just just maybe Ramirez being slightly better than than I think maybe he's being get, given credit for. Um, and I think I think it's going to be a bit of a shock, but I, I'm going to go for Ramirez to just get a split decision in the end. Yeah, my prediction is a little bit of a mix of, of Michael's and Charlie's. I'm actually going for a split decision for Taylor. Um, I think he can win this well for it not to be a split decision. But I just think that Ramirez will nick a few rounds and he'll always be in the fight to make a few rounds closer than expected. Um, I think he's got a really good train in Robert Garcia. He's got amazing sparring on tap. Um, and I think the thing that doesn't get mentioned enough is Progre. Although Taylor did brilliantly in the mid stages of that fight, Progre sort of faded off massively. It's my biggest criticism of Progre, and something that really annoys me is that he just doesn't look like he makes the weight well, and he just never looks sort of had to have the engine over twelve rounds. Whereas I think Ramirez really does. Ramirez has a really good engine. He's going to keep coming for twelve, and he's going to be in there. And I don't think he'll Taylor will have quite the respite that he'll that he had against Progre at certain times. And um, so I do think that Ramirez is going to make it closer in some stages. I'm going for a split decision for Taylor because ultimately I feel Taylor should win. But a split decision either way to Ramirez as well on a bit of a dodgy scorecard wouldn't surprise me. But if I'm go if I'm going to go on just who I believe is the better fighter and how they can win, I think I'm going to go for a Taylor split decision, majority decision, something close like that. But I think uh, that's three for Taylor, one for Ramirez. We're now going to quickly uh, talk about the rest of the card. I'll just quickly run through it before we move into our question of the week. So Jose Zapeda versus Hank Lundy. Obviously, Lundy's a name that a lot of people are familiar with, Fort Molina, Crawford over the years. But Zapeda is someone that's Really underrated at 140, gave gave Ramirez a really good fight. He'd knock out of the year last year against Baranchik. If he can sort of stay stay consistent with his performances over 12 rounds, you've got a real player there. And I think Ramirez's win over him ultimately gets better with time as well. Elvis Rodriguez at 140 as well is one of the most exciting up-and-comers from the Dominican Republic. Really good fighter, but looked a little bit... Um, Looked a bit troubled last time out against Veron. He just took a while to get going and then he was chasing the fight a little bit and forcing it. But I think if he can start to settle down, he'll be really good as well. So that wraps up the card. We'll now move into our question of the week that is actually still focused on Ramirez Taylor, but it's a bit around the broadcasting situation because we mentioned it on the uh, on the halftime break. 
So it's going to be landing on Fight TV in the UK. Um, Josh Taylor fought on BT in September, and it seemed like that was the obvious route that was that they were building towards that. But no, no broadcaster has picked it up, although Sky have picked up Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather this week. Just feels really frustrating that we're going to have to pay. And this is not a dig at Fight TV because every time I've used it, the platform has been really cool. I think they've got a really good social media account as well. And every time I've used it, I've used it for the Turvy Ed Vostick and loads of other fights. It's been really, really good. So I like their service. It's just the fact it's ended up on there that we're going to have to fire up a laptop and pay for a streaming service rather than sitting down in front of our TVs and watching a Brit potentially become undisputed. I'm going to get your thoughts first, Michael. What have you made of the, the broadcasting situation? Uh, to be honest with you, it's it's a joke, isn't it? Let's be honest. Uh, I mean, we've got a, a great British fighter, you know, potentially going undisputed, you know, eighteen, you know, within eighteen fights. I mean, it's it's unheard of uh, for our for our fighters. Uh, you know, Sky, uh, BT, even you know, Channel Five have recently shown Carl Frampton. They showed the Javonta Davis and Cruz fight. I feel as if, you know, even, you know, ITV, they've shown boxing previously, at least one of these guys should be getting behind Taylor, getting behind our guy, you know, in an undisputed clash. It, it just should be somewhere other than, I mean, like you say, I, I've not used Fight TV yet, but I will be on a Saturday night. But yeah, it's, 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 a, sh- it's a shame, really, that no one really is getting behind Taylor the way they should, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I completely agree. Charlie? I think I think the problem is as fans we expect um all fights to be to be shown over here in some way shape or form you know for what um you know why are we not picking up this card or this card I remember I remember Hearn even being asked as to you know why he wasn't picking up that Charlo double header back in last year at some point and and then obviously uh, Lomachenko Lopez as well and I think ultimately it just proves Sky Sports, BT Sport as well. I know BT Sport do a lot with the UFC, so maybe they have a little bit more of a, well, look, we do this over in America. But I think ultimately it shows that they're not they're not in it for the love of boxing. I mean, they charge nineteen ninety nine for Chisora Parker. They're not in it because they love boxing. You know, they're in it because there is a market where they can they can put shit fights on for 20 quid and get enough people to buy it whether or not that blows our mind and why are people pay, paying this when you can just stream it i agree with all of that and i stream it but ultimately there is a market and the taylor ramirez stuff that though it's it's yeah channel five could have took it sky sports could have took it and in a in an age of where no one watches live tv anymore anyway you know everything's about on demand and catch up and recording and all the rest of it that it shouldn't even matter that it's 4am because people can just stick it on record and watch it the next day. But what we're not privy to is, is how much, um, how much the, 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 whoever owns the rights to this fight is charging the UK to, to take it. And if it's, if it's that they want an amount that can only be justified if it is stuck on pay-per-view and Sky Sports and now BT Sport as well have got, the sort of numbers and proof to themselves of what does sell and what doesn't sell, they're not, they're, they're simply not going to take it, you know? And, and, and I think it's nice to think, well, you know, stick it on normal Sky Sports or stick it on normal BT Sports, but we, we don't know how much they're being charged for it. This is no sort of defense of the broadcasters. I think it's just me accepting that we're not going to get all the fights we want to see. And, and listen, Floyd Mayweather against um, uh, one of the two YouTube brothers, Logan Paul, I think it is, is being shown on Sky Sports box office. So it tells you every at 4 a.m. So it tells you everything you need to know about what type of fights they're happy to take and what type of fights they're not, you know, and 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 simply put, Taylor Ramirez on Sky Sports box office doesn't do enough buys for them to justify doing it. And it would cost them too much money, I'm guessing, for them to stick it on normal Sky Sports. And 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 ultimately, this won't be the only one. It's it's ridiculous because it's, you know, for all the belts and it's a British fighter. And I understand all of that, that there should be a broadcaster getting behind him. But they won't. You know, they 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 simply won't do that. And and it's just unfortunately the the world we live in. We, you know, it's a good thing that there is at least an app that is taking it. Yeah, they're gonna charge you for it, but We've all sat around here and admitted we've paid for worse fights. So at least it is on. Um, and at least, you know, there is a way for us to view it. 
Yeah, I'm happy it's on a good service. But, you know, as, as a boxing fan, someone that stays up every weekend to watch these cards, I, I pretty much stay up every weekend to stream Showtime and top rank cards because we don't get them in the UK. I don't expect us Brits to be able to have access to absolutely every fight. But my problem is last year with Charlo, the Charlo doubleheader, the same with Lomachenko versus Lopez. They're saying, why aren't we getting it over here? I get why, because it's too much to have it on. But why Why can Channel 5 get Javante Davis at four in the morning against Leo Santa Cruz, but not get a Brit in an undisputed fight? And you may say, but Javante Davis, he, no one gives a fuck about Javante Davis over here, apart from boxing fans as well. At least here, there's extra Brits on top of boxing fans that are going to watch it. So I'm, not, I'm taking Sky at the equation because we know what Sky are about. Sky are all about the money. BT have the UFC, so I think they have more of a, a reason to not be able to pick it up. But in terms of Channel 5 and ITV, I mean, I think if, if Josh Taylor was still with Cyclone, he probably would have got this on ITV or Channel 5 because that's what Barry, Barry has that relationship with ITV. And it was one of the reasons that, that Frampton and Josh Taylor have featured on there before. But my problem is more around if you're going to if you're going to pick up these these other fights, then surely you can pick up Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez, which is my problem. No, no, I, just, I do agree. Sorry, I do agree. I just I, I'm guessing. Javonta Davis, um, Santa Cruz is costing them less to broadcast, I would imagine, and and maybe you're why right, though? I I, I, well, I mean I don't know. You know, obviously I'm but, not in. That, that's I'm the problem. In. Like we don't know, so we can't really speculate that. Like, but sure, but but, 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 uh, but but why would that cost more than that? I'm sure Floyd would charge more money than Top Rank and Bob Aaron would for you to host the rights to one of their shows. Yeah, I, I would just be surprised. I'd be very surprised if. Someone, unless unless the Tank Davis fight absolutely flopped on Channel 5 and they went, well, fucking hell, we've just wasted a load of money on that. We can't afford to do it. I don't know. I would like to think, I would like to think that that if we're talking about it from a business sense, they're at least, at least I have to give them credit for, they are at least, though I don't want them to think in a business sense, I just want them to take the fight because I want to watch it. But I would like to think they're at least sitting there and saying, adding up the numbers and saying, well, Maybe they want more for this fight than they did to the tank fight, or the tank numbers crashed and burned so badly that that we don't want to take four AM fights anymore. I, I I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll, none of us know. Linus, your thoughts? Um, again, it all boils down to we, we 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 don't know. We don't know what the crack is. We don't know what the deals are. We don't know what's being sold to who. We don't know <clears throat> what the deal is for the mayor of Logan Paul. We don't we don't know. We we have no idea, and. You know, it all goes down, it all, to an extent, goes back to, he's not that, you know, Josh Taylor, you know, he's obviously known to a lot of the actual boxing heads around here. And in general, everyone knows who Josh Taylor is in the boxing circuit, but the casual kind of fans that you can tell it to don't, they don't really know him, they don't really know how good he is, they don't really know. And Do they know Javante so, Davis, <clears throat> Like that that's the thing. Like I don't get why. Yeah. Why, why. It, it, again, again, it's hard because we don't yeah, I mean, we don't know the ins and outs of it. We don't know we we don't know why that got sold. We don't we we don't we don't know. But I'm just trying to and I'm not trying to make an excuse for it because I think you know Josh Taylor should be on <clears throat> I should be able to go on Sky and see the fight. I should be able to go on BT. I should be able to go on ITV. I should be able to go on all these things. I shouldn't have to go on some miscellaneous app to watch it. Like fair play for them for taking it and actually giving us an opportunity to see it. But I, you know, it, it's 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 disappointing. It's disappointing. Is what I'm trying to say to to for it to be in this situation. You know, we go well, we got a British we got a British fighter unifying. A division and it's not really being shown on any terrestrial tv it is it's i don't know it's disappointing it's very disappointing it's just it just shows how how many non-boxing people they are at these big companies in this country because josh taylor is, has the chance to go undisputed and i've, I've ranted about british boxing before but you're not going to see another british undisputed champion obviously uh, joshua fury is going to perfectly align for it but outside of those, you're not going to see another one for another 15, 20 years because British boxers aren't at the level of the rest of the world. It's just fact. Our amateur system isn't as good. Our promotion, our matchmaking in this country is awful. And it's just, we're not going to get it again and we're not going to have these opportunities. I mean, could, do people know who the last undisputed uh, champion was for Britain? It was Lennox Lewis. I mean, how long mm. ago was that? Like, do you know what I mean? That's late 90s. That was I wasn't even probably born at the time that he won that. So... 
it just it's it just annoys me that and we can sit here and try and make business excuses for it but we don't know the numbers so it's probably not even worth trying there the fact is it's bullshit that we as british fans have to sign on to our laptops and our phones to go onto an app to watch this fight rather than being able to sit down and potentially watch a brit make history and really prove himself as one of the best pound for pound fighters on uh, on earth so just annoys me i think there's there's uh, we can make excuses for it but i don't think there should be excuses for it i think it should I think it should be lauded and people should should make more of a fuss about it. I think that's actually probably the best question of the week we've done so far because it probably drove the best conversation. That wraps up that episode. Did you uh, enjoy joining us today, Michael? Yeah, no, it was good. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Uh, enjoyed it. I hope I'm back soon. No worries. And Linus, good to be back. I see you in one of the new LU Boxing uh, T-shirts. So they, they're now available, right? Yeah, they are now available. I just need, I think, I've got your sizes. You just need the colours you want. Okay, very nice. I'll um, I'll leave a link in the description as well so people can place their orders. And Charlie, uh, are you going to be using the Manscaped for when we hit 500 subscribers? I told you now, I've got one for the facial stuff and one for the one for the bollocks. But but also after my, my little outburst just then, I'm hoping that uh, Channel 5 are on the, on the phone to me later and I uh, am the new face of Channel 5 boxing for the once every 18 months that they pick up a fight. <laughs> yeah and you can make as many stupid decisions as they do <laughs> um but yeah i just want to say thank you to to everyone that's watching um uh, two weeks ago i think it was on the canelo saunders podcast i sat here and thanked everyone for getting my channel to 200 subscribers well i'm now at 300 which is only two weeks later which is pretty amazing and something that i didn't foresee at all so thank you everyone that subscribes and i think a sign of the growth of the podcast and everything is is the sponsorship so please support us by using the code every detail is going to be on the screen and down in the description and stuff so please use it but we'll be back next week to talk Haley and Nares as well as Daenerys versus Bali but until then we'll catch you next time <laughs>